want updates on sports stories. Advice news. Yeah. <laughs> Fun <laughs> updates on sports stories across the globe. Aaron Akira Jala joins us. Good morning. Yeah, very good morning. I blame you, Rafa. <laughs> yeah, very good morning to you, Tundun. Good morning to you, Doctor. Good morning to you, Rafa. Good morning, Aaron. Um, Rafa, let's start it off from the story that actually came in over the course of the weekend. We spoke about it. Pesero's bad news. Though. No, Pesero has actually been given, <laughs> has been handed a super good job. Uh, that's, oh, wow. uh, that's what the NFM is confirming. And according to reports, you know, it is being said that the Sports Ministry decided on not giving them an extended contract, or rather, or probably a large contract that they actually whittled it down to just 12 months. So Jose Pissero has just 12 months to work his magic. At the moment, I think what the Super Eagles need is someone that will just come and stabilize the team because we are hearing ex-internationals give their opinion about this. We don't need somebody that would take us to the promised land right now. Because we are at low the bar. We are at a very, very bad spot. So we need somebody to help at least stabilize the team. And then maybe moving forward, when I get somebody that can actually move us to the next level. Well, let's see how he actually goes at the moment. Just 12 months, of course, he'll be taking over. Uh, he'll be assisted by um, Finiti George and not forgetting Salisu Yusuf. Uh, his first tax will be that game against L3 of Mexico on the 28th of this month. So a lot is expected from the Super Eagles um, moving forward. Let's see if the Portuguese will be able to weave his magic like several Portuguese have actually done world over. We'll have to wait and see. Jose Pissero, I must state again, is the new Super Eagles coach. Away from that. Okay, you say it's sad. Away from that, it was almost turning into a sad affair for um, the citizens yesterday as Manchester City came from behind to draw 2-2. But they had an opportunity to win it with Riyad Mahrez, the Algerian, fluffing his lines from 12 yards, and it ultimately ended 2-2, giving Liverpool the slightest of hopes. And all the results actually came in. Everton were very lucky that it was a bad day all around at the bottom of the table as they lost to Brentford. A massive fight back from um, Brentford there and Spurs strengthening their grip on trying to finish fourth on the table with a very slender win over Burnley. Now away from that, uh, in the 150th FA Cup, um, Liverpool once again had a deja vu moment. They played 120 minutes against Chelsea like they did in the League Cup and ultimately, on penalties, came out tops with captain on the day, Cesar Spoleta, fluffy from 12 yards. Also, Sadio Mane also had a day to forget. Uh, he almost handed it to Chelsea with his... Um, with the Senegalese team, may say, we're talking about Mendy before um, before Liverpool slotted the all important one, and Simicas actually getting it there. The, this, the bench was actually a little bit nervy before just erupting a rapturous celebration and leaving one man, Thomas Tuchel, red faced. Two finals this season in both the League Cup and the FA Cup, and losing to Liverpool on both occasions. Um, let's see how we actually let's. Let's see if he will be able to bounce back from this next season. Now, for the women's FA Cup, Chelsea might be fluffing their lines for the men, but the women just know how to win. And they have been dominating. And when you look at it, this is their third FA Cup. Uh, this is their third Women's League Cup on the bounce. And you look at that, Emma Hayes has been fantastic for Chelsea. After winning the league, they decided to come from behind to actually thumb Manchester City on the day. And right now, the female team keep waxing stronger. Talking about women, let's give it up for our Nigerians, Azizad Oshola. I should not stop 20 goals for all the season, winning the female Pichichi in the Spanish Primera, in the Spanish Feminine Division in Spain and Barcelona doing almost the unthinkable. We know they are very, very solid. We know they are fluid and we know they are very efficient. But going 30 out of 30 this season is just remarkable. 159 goals scored. Play 30 this season in the league, won a whopping 30. The team is simply unstoppable at the moment. And in the NBA, Yanis Atetokounmpo, that's why having a good postseason, I must actually say, for the box and hoping that his team can defend the trophy they won last season, not so much as uh, in the game, in the best of seven series, Celtic, the Celtic, the Boston Celtics decided to peep them out four to three as it stands right now. Unfortunate for them that they will not be getting to back-to-back -back finals, but the Boston Celtics they will be hoping to do 
a great one. That it's a legacy team in the NBA, and they'll be hoping to do that one better. But look at Doncic, who is another man that will be hoping to help his team get to the NBA finals and certainly doing it with style, I must actually say. At the moment, before I actually come to you guys, Tundu, Novak Djokovic, looking in the mood these days and just shrugging off all that happened at the beginning of the year. Um, he just, he just was, he just ran riots and ran rings over Titi Pass in the first, in the first, um, in the first set of this particular one, six love was how he actually ended. Ultimately, he went seven, five, seven, six, and it was his 1,000th game. And at the moment, with Nadal still shaky, a lot of people are favoring that he will dominate not just the French Open, but the entire clay season. Let's see how he actually goes. So, at the moment, he's the man to beat. At 34, he's still the man to beat. And let's also give it up for the 20-year-old Polish international, Iga Swiatek. As she's been dominated 28 games consecutively. She's won five titles. She's in Paris on the court. 20-year-old, not distracted, not sidelined by anything. You it's all about the tennis. Are you throwing shade no, at I'm Emma Raducanu? No, I'm not. How very she dare you? She is doing the business on the court. She's letting her tennis do the talking, and she's completely dominant at the moment. What number one? I want your take on yes. Djokovic. This is what champions are. Yes, this is what I mean, doing. watch him go. But Stefano Sissipas, after being beaten by Djokovic, yeah. said that Djokovic is the greatest of all time, oh, greater than Nadal and Federer. I, I clearly I, agree, but I wanted your take. No, I agree with him. You can't, you can't hate um, the man they call the Fed Express. Mm -hmm. You can't hate him. He's, his grace, his poise, his panache, his style is next to none. But when, you, when it comes to the numbers, no one comes close to Novak Djokovic. And we know that in terms of Grand Slam right now, Nadal is one ahead. But you cannot put it past Djokovic. Before the end of the year, we still have three Grand Slams. They will build it. We still have the French Open and we have the US Open. You can't put it past Novak Djokovic. Let's see how it goes. Uh, he's, a, he's a great tennis player. But that doesn't uh, relegate the fact that he acted very stupid during the COVID episode. He could have just taken the vaccine and just moved on like yeah, that. Uh, I mean, so, but he's a great tennis player. He's, he's a dedicated tennis player. I yes, mean, I remember talking about Djokovic many years ago to somebody and I said, you know, his parents were restaurateurs. He used to like pizza a lot. He dropped eating pizza just to get his body fitness so he can go on and on and on. I mean, he has a record that he went one of the longest unbeaten. Uh, and I think, did he break Invalinde's record? No. No, I don't think he did. He didn't. So I, I think it was two games close to breaking Invalinde's yeah. record when he went on a run and he wasn't beaten. I mean, it just shows you the greatness of this, this Serb, you know, this Serb tennis player. And uh, he just shows you what he stands for, the passion, the dedication and all of that. And when I tell the story of Djokovic, I like to also remember that all of this would not have been possible if a certain Russian leader called Boris Yeltsin didn't like tennis so much and put in a lot of money as regards investing in tennis and people from the Baltic states and everybody benefited. Yeah, everybody. Because and we all, all saw them become yeah, stars. And we all yeah. saw them, the Maratsafins of this world, you know, all of them benefited yeah. just because somebody that was a leader was so passionate about tennis. The question is, who would be that person passionate about tennis to upgrade, any sport, any sport in, in Nigeria, Nigeria, any sport to in Nigeria. push it forward, yeah. you know, to okay. a place where Nigerians can at least start to rank in the top ATPs and do well. We used to have that in the seventies in Which this country. Go this up, I mean, know. we had players mm. that did well. Yeah, a Nigerian tournament organized by I think Lord Rumens and the Tennis Association in the seventies at yes, a point God. in this country had better price pay money than Wimbledon. In 76. When Arthur Ashe came Yeah, when Arthur Ashe came in. In fact, it was the, the, the Mutala Mohammed coup that stopped the tournament. But that tournament in 76, organized in this same country, played at TBS here in Lagos yes, Island, yes. had better prize money than Wilbur So what happened to Nigeria Tennis? Mm -hmm. Well, congratulations to uh, Djokovic. Yes. That was his 1,000th uh, career, career win. Yes. Career win victory. So it's remarkable. remarkable. It's phenomenal. And uh, if you have uh, Sisipas uh, paying tribute to him, I think it's not uh, misplaced. Uh, the other lady, Swiatek, was also, you know, phenomenal. Mm -hmm. She practically demolished <laughs> the Tunisian six to six to. on uh, Jabal, <laughs> yeah. uh, who only last week did well, but yeah. she couldn't sustain it. 
but in any case, uh, they are all looking forward to the Roland Garros, mm. uh, the French Open, yes. where it is assumed that uh, Djokovic will again uh, dominate. Now, congratulations also to uh, Asisato Shala of uh, Barcelona Femini. Mm. What makes her achievement even more remarkable is the fact that she was out of action for four months yes, she was out for as a while. result of injuries. And yet, you know, when the final uh, tally uh, was put together, uh, she became, uh, you know, the winner of the Golden Boat. Mm. And the second African, yeah. you know, uh, to do so in the Spanish uh, Primera uh, Division. Now, congratulations also to uh, uh, the uh, Chelsea ladies. Yeah. Now, last week, they took the Women's Super League title. Mm -hmm. And then seven days later, you know, they were very impressive. In the FA But uh, I don't think Man City uh, ladies should feel bad because uh, this was rated as probably, you know, one of the best FA Cup finals. Yes. Uh, by the, Clearly contested. Uh, by the com commentators. Yes. The energy, the drive, the determination uh, on both sides uh, before uh, Sam Kerr, you know, put in that... Uh, you know, go that decided everything. And congratulations to Emma Hayes, a fourth FA trophy mm. with uh, Chelsea. Chelsea. Right. And then to come to the main issue, <laughs> which is uh, Pesero. <laughs> okay, let's talk about now, it. Now, you gave an indication yes. that it's a one year contract. Yes. When Ademola Olajiri spoke, he didn't quite give us all the details. He just talked about agreed terms, right? After the signing of the uh, contract. Mm. So it's good. We know it's for one year. But the man you refer to, Fuludu, Edema, right? Okay. Edema That's Fuludu. It. Yes. Edema, 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 Edema uh, Fuludu. Yes. He is saying that he's not excited, that the solution to Nigerian football is not foreign coaches, and that we need to develop capacity at all, particularly our league. The league in Nigeria is uh, a shadow of what it used to be. In the glorious days of uh, Abiola Babes, one young national, you know, and all of those mm, uh, teams. Stationary stores. Stationary stores. BCC Lions of Boko, mm -hmm. you know, all those teams. So what happened? No, okay. Let, no, I haven't finished. Okay. But the question I want to ask you, some of those are great times, since you have reported one. Is a man going to stay in Europe? They stay in I mean, Europe. I'll be coaching from no, Europe. It's going to be domiciled in Nigeria. A DHL coach. No, it's going to be domiciled in Nigeria. He will be here. Yeah. Okay, so how much is he going to be paid? We're not sure of that yet. So we don't have the figure ask. yet. And when they do the contract signing, maybe we might okay. get an inkling into so that. Finally, John Fashano mm -hmm. says he knows the man very well. And that within six months, all of us will start protesting. <laughs> that he doesn't think that Pesero is good enough. <laughs> But that he will not go into details. I hope John Fashanu will not be proven right. No, but now, no, no, Doctor, let me put it. Let's put it here now. Um, for those, I think, I think the problem that we have in Nigerian football is that talk about foreign and local-based coaches who should take yeah, Super no, to the next level. It's not good. Forget it. Mm. Right. Is that not what they said about? Is that not what they said about getting a troll? But we are meant to eat the humble pie because <laughs> even people will still tell you that getting a troll was a cancer to Nigerian football. But Something he did that I always shouted out to the high heavens is that what most coaches could never do in Nigeria, qualify Nigeria without us punching calculators or having any permutations, okay. he did it. Well. Thank you very let's much. allow the man walk and let's see if it will actually be well, for the better. The we'll On the 28th, he will have his auditions out there. Yeah, let's see how, what happens. Maybe uh, John Fashano will end up as a prophet. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. We'll have to wait and see. Doctor, yes. we'll wait and see. <laughs> <laughs> they, know, they know the man, though. They will not do well, though. Believe your fashion, no. <laughs> All right, let's see how it goes. Always a pleasure.